Have you ever heard about the 80-20 rule in team meetings? You know, 20% of the people do 80% of the talking. Why is that? Well, some people love to talk and enjoy hearing themselves talk. Now, full disclosure, I am trying to be one of those, right? I don't love to talk, but I, I, I think I do love listening to myself talk. Okay, now other people prefer to listen first and are hesitant to speak up, even in a group of people that they know. Welcome to Confidently Speaking, the podcast that'll get you to fall in love with your own version of English. If only a few people speak and the majority remain silent most of the time, you miss out on alternative points of view. Maybe you cover certain topics too quickly because people who actually disagree don't express their views. Risks and opportunities may be overlooked and worse, you might lose the commitment or motivation of your team. This is why it's important to involve those quiet team members in the conversation. You know, here's how to do that in an unobtrusive way, right? That ensures everybody can contribute. When you set up a meeting, be sure to incorporate a writing exercise. So before the meeting, right? This is the written exercise. It's useful to have everyone prepare their answers to a given question before the meeting. This helps level the playing field by boosting those who don't feel comfortable answering questions on the spot. You know, a lot of people feel uh, on the spotlight or under the spotlight when uh, when you ask them a question because they didn't prepare for it. And it doesn't really matter what language you're speaking, whether it's your first, second or third language. People don't like feeling on uh, under the spotlight. Right. So begin the meeting by asking to hear the answers your team has prepared. Be careful not to call on quiet members unexpectedly as they may feel uncomfortable being exposed right? It's better to directly address people who are well prepared. Talk one-on-one. -on -one. You know, this simple tool is rarely used. If this is a recurring meeting, you'll already know who talks and doesn't. Tell one or two people from each group a few days before the meeting what you expect of them. To the talkers, you can say something like, I really appreciate your contributions in our meetings. Next time, though, can you help me make sure that everyone contributes? Tell me your ideas in advance. You know, this is something we do a lot when we are uh, when we're teachers. You know, uh, there's always a student who, you know, like takes command, a student who is an overachiever probably and wants to participate and, you know, kind of like a know it all. So while we appreciate that they do want to participate, we also have to tell them to hold off a little bit, right? And allow, uh, allow the others to participate as well. Now, to the quiet team members, this is what you could say. I really appreciate your contributions in our meetings. You know, from time to time, though, I'm going to ask you for your thoughts and ideas, especially when we talk about this and that. Of course, this should refer to a topic that your team member is already familiar with, right? Now, what happens during the meeting? Well, listen to this. When I want to do something different or implement changes in a meeting, I choose a playful approach. You know, this is more fun and more memorable. If you want different behavior from your people, announce at the start of the meeting that you're going to play upside down. What in the world is upside down? Well, that means everyone should exhibit the opposite of their normal behavior. People who tend to be cautious and quiet should now be outspoken, while the usual talkers should be reserved and quiet. Make sure you announce upside down in a playful way and, of course, include yourself in the game. If you are the one who usually dominates the conversation, well, keep your participation to a minimum, right? You can do this for the entire meeting or for only part of a meeting, whatever suits the situation. If people fall back into their normal patterns, it's important that you and the team intervene. Say upside down to remember, sorry, not to remember, to remind the people of the tasks at hand. 
Allow for some time to reflect on the experience, of course, as a team, because this can be a great chance for everybody to get things from a different and, and to see things from a different perspective. You can also have a cheat sheet. Now, what in the world do I mean by a cheat sheet? Check this out. During a meeting, hang three cards on the wall that say, listen more, talk less, and also help others to speak up. In a more, no, in a remote meeting, you can prepare a slide with these three phrases and use it as your virtual background. For example, this is the meeting cheat sheet. It's easy to implement and has a direct effect. The first time you use this, you should explain why you are doing so and that your goal is to have more a more balanced participation. You can also try calling on people, right? When you call on people who are hesitant to speak up in a group, provide some warning to avoid catching them off guard. You know, uh, preface calling on them by saying something like, Emily, in a minute, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this and that. Right. So that will give them a little warning of what's happening of what's to come. Right now, um, you can write in silent mode, you know, because a lot has been written about the benefits of writing in advance. Writing could also be helpful during the meeting to make sure that everyone has their say. Of course, the next time you ask for input, don't ask for that verbal feedback but have the team write down what they want to say. That could be on a card or probably a sticky note, right? And uh, you can pin that on the board. Of course, in a remote setting, use the chat or an online whiteboard. Now, let's talk about breakout sessions. In workshops or seminars with teams, it's often the case that when you ask the whole group a question, no one answers. However, if you have people um, work in pairs or small groups and you ask the same question, you'll find there is a lot more energy in the room and people come up with ideas or answers relatively quickly. This is because it takes more courage to speak up in a larger group. It's like stage fright, right? And when people talk in smaller groups, it feels more like a casual conversation with friends and people open up more easily. Now, what can you do after the meeting? Well, you could encourage helpful behavior. Let's assume that all goes well, right? The talkers listened and the listeners spoke up. Uh, now comes the moment of truth, personal, direct, and timely feedback. Now, this is important because you need to tell the individual members that, uh, you know, like what you thought was good and you can save some. Sorry. If you want to tell them what was good, then you can say something like, in our meeting this morning, we had quite a vivid discussion in which everyone was engaged. Hey, thank you very much for keeping your contributions to a reasonable length uh, that allowed, you know, that itself allowed others to speak up as well. It was really helpful that you asked Matthew for his opinion when you saw that he wanted to speak up. Hey, you know what? Keep it up. So. As you can see, you can change the balance of your meetings playfully and together with your team. Your team members will gain an understanding and accept each other and become more flexible in the behavior in other circumstances as well. So there's a lot to be gained uh, when allowing people who are normally quiet or introverted also to participate. Hey, maybe they have a lot to say, provide an option for them to use it, right? It doesn't have to be verbal necessarily. Hey, let them do so in writing as well. Guys, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Remember, you can you can leave a comment on this uh, about this podcast on Spotify, right? Or you can send me messages on Instagram, on TikTok, Facebook, and pretty much all social media, even on uh, LinkedIn. So, guys, thank you very much. I'll see you next week, and bye-bye.